They call it an opening statement and a closing argument. In the closing, you're allowed to argue. You can argue the facts that the jury has heard. In the opening statement, you're only supposed to be stating what the facts will be when you get the witnesses on the stand, what you will prove to them. And the, what was controversial about your opening statement is you did not wind up proving, you did not submit the evidence that was in this opening statement, but it was in the jurors' heads, and many believe it saved her. So let's talk about that after I play a little bit of it. Here's what you said in SOT 8 about little Kaylee and how she likely died. Kaylee Anthony died on June 16, 2008, when she drowned in her family's swimming pool. She saw George Anthony holding Kaylee in his arms. She immediately grabbed Kaylee and began to cry and cry and cry. <clears throat> and shortly thereafter, George began to yell at her. Look what you've done! Your mother will never forgive you, and you will go to jail for child neglect for the rest of your freaking life. Mm. So why did you never introduce any of that evidence at trial? Because I didn't have to. Uh, the, our system of justice requires the government to prove your guilt beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. As a defense lawyer, it's your job to point out the reasonable hypothesis of innocence. Everything I said in there, I had a good faith basis based on the evidence and based on what I anticipated the evidence to show. At no time am I required to put Casey on the stand, and at no time was she required to be put on the stand. But uh, there's a lot of things that prosecutors sometimes argue in their cases that they don't get to prove. And they certainly didn't prove a murder. So no one's going back and asking them, <laughs> why did you say this and this not come out or anything like that? Um, I can tell you every single word I said in that, in that opening statement, as in with every opening statement that I give in my career, it is based on, uh, it is based on a good faith basis based on a lot of what I know that goes around in the background of the evidence. And when I get asked about this case in particular, the very first thing that I, I, I tell people is if Casey told me at any point during that trial or when it was asked upon her whether she would take the stand, hey, I want to testify, and I tell her, oh, no, you're not, it doesn't matter what I say she's going to get up there and testify and it's it's mm -hmm. it's her constitutional right so for me to exclude things that i have a good faith basis may come out should either another witness testify to it or she testifies to it it has to be put out there otherwise i'd be facing malpractice imagine all this comes out at the last witness well, of what, the trial well, well where the did jury, you get your good faith basis i mean that's that's i get that but where did you get the good faith faith basis that she drowned in the pool that she saw, that the mother, Casey, saw her dad holding little Kaylee in his arms, that she immediately grabbed Kaylee and began to cry. This is very specific. She gr really? immediately grabbed her and began to cry. And that George yelled at her with the following quotes. Look what you've done. Your mother will never forgive you and you will go to jail for child neglect for the rest. Where'd you get that from? Well, you know better than to ask me those questions. I mean, you know, there's a thing that I respect incredibly, which is the attorney-client privilege, as well as other evidence in the case. You just finished talking about with Vinnie Politan about potential lawsuits. You think I want to drag myself into that when I've got all these other things going on in my life? I, I, I'd <laughs> rather not even uh, go anywhere near that. But I can tell you this. I, when I say I had a good faith basis, I, can, I am absolutely convinced I had a good faith basis. I stand by that today as I did 11 years ago. And... Um, and believe me when I, when I tell you there were numerous facts that came out in that case in evidence that no one ever talks about and no one ever wants to discuss. And um, and I'll just leave it at that. What do you mean? But finish, finish your sentence. That what? That bolster you, the drowning theory? Again, you, you, you have to read the transcripts or, or, or look at the actual trial. There's tons of stuff in there. And I'd rather not uh, rehash well, it. I'm, I'm just asking you, what, like what, what point are you making, though? Like, I'm, I'm not going to go back and look at every, what are you trying to right. say? If and, I were to go there, what point would it prove? That, that she drowned? Or like, what, what are you saying is bolstered by a review of the transcripts? 
Well, there were there was evidence testified to by our forensic experts as to the potential drowning theory. There was, uh, in addition to that, there was cross examination that the jury can uh, make their interpretations based on. They could they're free to believe a witness or not believe a witness based on those questions. And I can tell you this: a lot of the feedback that we got from the jury is they believe certain parts of the evidence. Um, there were statements made at numerous points throughout the trial that raised serious concern about the drowning in the pool. And, and when I say concern, I mean uh, raise the issue that that was a, certainly a potential aspect. And it's the prosecutor's job to exclude that reasonable hypothesis That's true. of innocence. That's true. So, yep. you know, they knew they knew about the drowning theory since day one. And but she had been telling cops it wasn't true. To exclude that, I get that. But but Casey had told the police that didn't happen. She said that at the time, and uh, to the documentary filmmaker's credit, she actually does include that in this piece. Um, there's an interview with a law enforcement officer saying with the, Casey was adamant that the child did not drown in the pool, and sure enough, Casey today is adamant that the baby did not drown in the pool. She's. You know, you, you maybe may have heard me play for Vinny, but she's like, there's lots of possible theories. That's not one of them. Just to reiterate, I don't want to get, play it again, but she says, lots of scenarios of what could happen. Her drowning in the pool is not one. It is not possible. In most scenarios, it'd be plausible. Not this one. The ladder was not on the pool. It's the only only way in or out for her or for me. Well, you're not going to pin me against uh, my former client's statements. I have nothing to say about that. That's not a case that I'm currently handling. So I'm not going to comment on that. But I can tell you this. If I had a nickel for every lie that was spoken in that case, I'd have been able to retire right after. And sure. I'm not referring to, to the lies of, in uh, that have to do with Miss Anthony. Uh, there were lies throughout that case from multiple witnesses and multiple people on the side who had knowledge and information but chose to say other things. So. Having said mm -hmm. that, that's really not foreign when it comes to criminal cases because people have their specific agendas and interests. So you have to you have to look at a case in its entirety and, and the entire complexity of the case. So uh, look, again, the, 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 your best argument ago, on that front is the I'm fact that the rehash. jury found for you. Uh, you're, no one's going to dispute that. Your your best argument is that the jury did that and found in your favor. Now, some of them have expressed regrets after the fact and said they they regret. Uh, I, would, coming to I, an I, I imagine why. Uh, you know, I wonder why with all of the media backlash that they faced and, and the personal attacks and threats. Um, I, I, I don't buy into that. I, I mean, they made the decision. They didn't know Casey. They're not friends of Casey. They had every reason in the world, given what they were exposed to prior to the trial, to convict her. So to so to come back and, and, and say that later on after the fact, it's it's ridiculous. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Oh my god. <laughs> Yet another thing to worry about. It can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. Is this explaining a lot in your world? Then pay attention because Miracle Brand offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding, like sheets pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry, less laundering of them. Mm. Miracle Brand sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you'll get better sleep every night. They are infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9% .9 of bacterial growth. How about that? Miracle sheets the well-named, are the perfect gift for your spouse, friends, and family. Who doesn't want better sleep and luxurious feeling bed sheets? And since these come with three free towels, you get two gifts in one. Stop sleeping on bacteria. <laughs> Go try miracle.com slash MK to try today, okay? Go to trymiracle.com slash MK to try today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Brand. Go to trymiracle.com slash MK, trymiracle.com slash MK, and use that code MK to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, trymiracle.com slash MK to treat yourself, a friend, or a loved one this holiday season. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.